in the previous vision, we discussed the fact that John was told to, to come up here and I will show you things to come. However, when John went up into heaven, all he saw was a worship scene. We explained that the worship scene is to reassure John and the people of God that God is in charge. But just before John sees the future, heaven has one more thing to show him. In Revelation chapter 5 and beginning from verse 1, the Bible says, Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy? to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. The question that the angel asks, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seven seals, is a similar rhetorical question that, that was asked of Philip. By Jesus, how can we find bread to feed so many people? Or where shall we find bread to feed so many people? It's a similar rhetorical question that was asked of Ezekiel. Son of man, can these bones live? It's not that God doesn't know the answer. It's not that heaven doesn't know the answer. But he wants us to contemplate the significance of this situation. Remember, a search was made of heaven, of earth, of under the earth to find someone who is worthy for this task and no one was found worthy to the point where John began to weep except as the Bible says in verse 5 and one of the elders said to me weep not behold the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals and I beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. So here, heaven wants us to know the lion of the tribe of Judah. Heaven wants us to know the lamb of God. Heaven wants us to know the root of of David, that there's a God who sits on the throne, but there's also a lamb who has been slain. And as soon as the lamb is presented, it's as if the book of Revelation can be now open. We can now see clearly what the future behold because the lamb is present. And you're gonna find through the rest of the book of Revelation, it is the one who sits on the throne and the lamb who is controlling and directing the activities. But the question we want to ask is, what makes him worthy? What makes him so important, so unique, that he alone? Remember now, the search was made of heaven, representing the fact that angels, no angel was found worthy. The search was made of earth. There is no living. The Caesars, none of them could, was found worthy. A search was made under the earth. None among the dead could be found worthy. Only Jesus, the Lamb of God. So what makes him so unique? There are six things I want to share with you as to why Jesus, the Lamb of God, the, the Lion of the, of the tribe of Judah, is made worthy. Just before I give you the six reasons why he alone is worthy, let me quickly explain what it means by the Lion of the tribe of Judah and the Root of David and the Lamb of God. This title or these titles point to the Messiah. It points to the one that the Old Testament, the entire Old Testament, was about the coming of this significant one. He is pointed to in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 as the seed of the woman who would crush the head of the serpent. The specific title of the Lion of the tribe of Judah points back to the promise that Jacob had made in Genesis chapter 49 and verse 10 that the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes, to whom it belongs. So really, this title represents the fact that he has a right to rule, and also that he would be coming from the, from the tribe of Judah. Adam was placed as a rightful ruler of the world, but when through transgression he fell, then God appointed a second Adam. God appointed a second ruler, who is Christ? But this Christ would not come into the world until many years after. But before he came into the world, this same promise was transferred from, to, from generation to generation. 
For the promise was made to Adam and Eve. It was transferred to Abel. It was transferred to Noah, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and to the children of Israel, and even to the King David. Because if you notice, he's referred to as the root of David, which signifies he is the one who would come and be filled with the Spirit of God. He is the one who would come to replace David as ruler of Israel. So you're going to find that the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and most of the New Testament books, they are actually written to prove that this Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah. He is the seed of the woman. He is the one that the Old Testament has been talking about. And the time will not allow us to go into all the proofs. There are so many. As a matter of fact, Dr. James Strange of the University of Florida in the United States developed a complex mathematical formula to discover the statistical probability of all these incredibly amazing prophecies being fulfilled. And his conclusions is that the chances are 1 in 1 trillion to the 16th power. In other words, it is impossible for all of these complex prophecies to point to the same person outside of the fact that it is God's purpose and God planned it that way. And the Bible tells us that when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son into the world, born of a woman, born under the law. In Luke chapter 24, verse 44, Jesus said to the disciples after his resurrection, he gave them a Bible study and he said, These are the words that I spoke to you while I was with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. And when you talk about everything, you're talking about every book, all the 39 books of the Old Testament pointed to Jesus as the Lamb of God. And when, when the time came and John the Baptist, the final prophet, saw him, he said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So, what makes him worthy? Here are the six reasons why he's worthy. Number one, he is worthy because he is not only human, he is God. You see, sin is a transgression of God's law. And so, only God could make provision for man to be forgiven of their sins. This offense is not only against man. It's against God. It's primarily against God. And so God, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 9, Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found... In fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The Jews understood that the Messiah would be of a divine nature. And that's why when Jesus made the claim that he is the Messiah, they attempted to, to kill him because they are saying that he is being a man, he is claiming to be God. Matter of fact, that's why he was crucified. He was crucified because he testified that he is the Messiah and they didn't believe him. There are still persons today who will not give him his rightful title, <laughs> who claim that he is some celestial being, but he is not God or he is some exalted human or something else. But in the end, this man is worthy to take the scroll because he is not only man, he is God. It's great to know that our salvation is not only in the hands of a celestial being, it is in the hands of of the very God. And if you notice, the worship from here onwards in the book of Revelation, they worship the one who sits on the throne and they worship the Lamb as well. The second reason that makes him worthy to take the scroll is that he became like us. In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 to 18, he says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So Christ, in order for him to be our helper, to be the second Adam, and to be our savior, he had to become human. And that's why Philippians chapter 2 says, he who thought in that rabbit to be equal with God made himself of no reputation. And therefore, he is able to help us because he can identify with our weaknesses. He can identify with our challenges because he walked this earth as human. He was born, he grew up, 
He became hungry. He was tired. He, he was thirsty. He faced what we face. Matter of fact, that's why he had to veil his divinity because he restricted himself to what humanity would face to the point, even to the point of death and dying on a cross. The third thing that makes him worthy is that he was sinless. In the sacrificial system, they should offer only animals that were without blemish, without any fault. And according to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, it says, For as much then as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Jesus fulfilled this, this requirement by living a perfect life. He was without sin from beginning to end. And his sinlessness is not only setting an example for us, it was also to prepare himself to be the Lamb of God who would offer himself as a sacrifice for sin. The third reason he is worthy to take the scroll and to open the future to us is because he died to save us from our sins. In other words, he took the punishment of sin upon himself and died in our place. And that's why the Bible says, in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5 to 7, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. First Peter 2, verse 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. You see, his death rescues us from the consequences of sin. If you notice, if you think about it, the only person today who has faced the true consequence of sin is Jesus. Jesus, in the flesh, on the cross, faced the full wrath of God against sin. And that's why he cried out in that moment of darkness, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because God truly forsook him. Because he became sin, he took the guilt of our sins, what, what we deserve, he took it upon himself so that we might get what he deserves. Number five, he is worthy not only because he died, he is worthy because he lives again. You see, it's not just because he died, because there are several persons who have been crucified and yet they don't live again. Matter of fact, None of us have faced a second death. And any of us who face a second death, we're not going to come back. But Jesus, the Son of God, he not only faced a second death, but he came back to life. He was resurrected. And this resurrection is not just like the resurrection of Lazarus. Lazarus' resurrection is made possible by Jesus' resurrection. Jesus is resurrected as the one who conquered death. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18, it says, And the living one, I am the living one, I died and behold, I am alive forever. And I have the keys of death and Hades. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, he says, But we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. That's why he became human, because he, taste, he wanted to taste death. God can't die, and so he took on human flesh, so that he can suffer and die. But because he's not only human, he is God, then death could not hold his body down. And so he came up victorious over sin and death. And finally, Jesus is worthy because he alone can make a permanent change in the life of the sinner. <laughs> because of his death, burial, resurrection, an intercession, forgiveness of sins is preached in his name to all that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Only is in his name, according to Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved outside of the name of Jesus. He alone is worthy. He alone can take a drunkard and make him sober. He alone can make somebody who is addicted to smoking and make him sober and conscious and having and restore his self-control again. Jesus can make 
permanent change in our lives. Jesus can give us eternal life. And that's why he made so many I am claims according to the book of John. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the true vine. Because truly, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And so, if you don't get to know anyone else in this world, make sure you get to know Jesus. Remember, a search was made of heaven, of earth, of under the earth, and no one could be found worthy. He alone, in his name alone, can we find forgiveness of sins? Can we find hope of eternal life? Can we find redemption, redemption and a place in the kingdom of God? And so because of him, because of this revelation, you'll find that the, the, the saints of God, by the time you get to the end of the seventh seal, John says he saw a great number which no one could number. When it was asked, who are these and when do, where do they come from? These are they who have come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So saints of God can now join the worship in heaven. Not only do you have the four living creatures and the 24 elders and the angels, but you and I can be around that throne to worship God because of the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne. The Lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed, and so we can now rejoice. John can stop the weeping because he's worthy.